How are you doing today? Today we're going to deal with a problem. We have a check engine light that came on and uh, when we read the codes it came up as the variable valve timing oil control valve malfunction. All right, fairly common problem on these V6 Avalons and Camrys and Siennas and whatnot. This is the part that uh, is requiring changing. Uh, I picked this one off, off of Amazon including shipping cost me 40 bucks. A uh, lot cheaper than the dealership, but uh, it's still a reputable brand. It's a Dorman, uh, good reputable brand. It's a very simple part to change. There's actually two of them. There's one for the left bank and one for the right bank. In this case, it's the left bank or the front cylinder bank. Cylinders, this right here, two, um, four, and six are on the front bank. So this is the one that controls the valve, uh, the valve timing on this bank. There's another one for the rear bank similar part, identical part really, other than where the little little tab is, is on the other side. It's just one simple electrical connector, one screw. It's easy to change quite literally five minutes unless the part's stuck and then it's six minutes. All right, so let's take a look how we go about changing it. Uh, if you can take a look down in there, that's the electrical connector that we're going to need to uh, disconnect. You just see it there at the base of my ratchet. And this is the one 10 millimeter bolt that we need to undo. Okay. Now, um, I don't know if you noticed in the background, we've got lots of snow here. In uh, the recent weeks, we've dropped down to as much as minus 38 degrees uh, Celsius. And of course, that's the night this thing chose to break. And when I tried to unplug it, I cracked the electrical connector that holds on the, the, um, the wire. So it should come off fairly easily now. Um, there is a tab. Normally, you have to push down the tab, and then the connector slides off. Now, in my case, the tab's broken off. So I'm going to have to put a zip tie to hold it in place when I'm finished. Okay, so that one connector comes off. And there's this one 10 millimeter bolt right here. Okay. Let's so take loosen that up. It's a nasty spot to drop things, especially when there's snow on the ground, so try not to. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, so we'll just set that aside in a reasonably secure place, right there on top of the battery. Then the valve simply pulls out. Now it has been out, so it's it's easier the second time, obviously, but it just pops out like that. Here we go. Okay. The first time it came out, it gave me a bit of aggravation. I had to use a pair of channel lock pliers and just rotate it a little bit as I was pulling, and it came out. That's why there's little scratches there. Okay. So there's our new valve. Okay, it comes with a new seal already in place. Okay, always wise to compare the two, make sure they look the same. They do. Okay, connectors all look the same. Let's go ahead and put it in. Okay. Probably not a bad idea actually to put a little bit of that oil right along that. Let's see if I can do that. Mess up my gloves here nicely. A little bit of oil on the seal always makes it slide in place a little easier. So, put that back in. Kind of feeling around the dark here. Hold that hose back to get it lined up. There it is. Little wiggle, make sure it goes in properly. Make sure that there it is, it snapped right in place nicely. Get our I'm take off my gloves here because I don't want to drop this and go hunting in the snow for it. I'm a firm believer in anti-seize grease on parts. I put a little dab on there last time before I put it in, so it's still on there. I doubt that shows on the video, but a little dab of anti-seize grease on a bolt will mean that in 10 years when you need to do this again, you'll get it out, no problems. So. I'm sure there is some specific torque rating that you need to put this on. I've been doing this for so long, I have never really bothered 
this go by feel, but it is an aluminum cylinder head, so don't go nuts. It's nice and snug, and that's it. Okay? You don't want to go nuts on it and then end up stripping out the thread. Okay? Then your wire connector goes back on. Here we go. Like I said, I'm going to have to put a zip tie on it to make sure that that connector doesn't come off, but you don't have to worry about that on yours if you're careful. And that's it. That's all there is to change in the variable valve timing oil control valve. Of course, you want to start the car, check it, reset the codes. If you have a code reader, just hit reset, otherwise just connecting the battery will reset it. And you're on your merry way. Thank you. Okay, the other oil control valve that we're not changing today is just right back here. If you see where the screwdriver was pointing, we got a snapshot there just for you to look at. It's just below the throttle linkage. It's going to be much easier to get to uh, with these hoses out of the way. So you'll probably find you'll need to take these couple of hoses away. Uh, maybe even take it off this whole throttle body and ear box might make your life a lot easier getting at it. But it's not impossible either. Not quite as easy as the first one we did, but it's, it's doable. All right, so good luck if that's the one that you have to change. Good luck to you. Okay, we uh, had a problem with the check engine light that turned out to be the uh, oil control valve for the variable valve timing. The valve itself could be defective, but there's also an issue that sometimes can cause a, a problem with them. And there's a, there's a small filter that controls the oil flow to the oil control valve. And if you want to take a look down in here, you can see it just looks like a regular 14 millimeter bolt. It's right there on the end of my screwdriver. Okay. We're going to be removing that and there's going to be a little cone-shaped filter inside there. It's just a piece of screen material, really, that sometimes gets plugged up with gunk and that stops the oil flow. So we're going to take that out and give it a little wash out with brake cleaner. You can buy those filters if you wish. They're not expensive, but it's definitely something that's worth trying maybe before you go out and buy your new oil control valve.